Welcome to Kempo University. My name is Al Babinick and I'm your instructor. The definition I use for the crane principle, and this isn't necessarily handed down to me by anybody, this is just how I think about it. The definition for the crane principle is striking on the way to a chambered position. You're striking on the way to a chambered position. Now, I'm going to actually do Leaping Crane for you with uh, my buddy Ted. But for right now, listen to this explanation if you could before you jump to that part. All right? So in Leaping Crane, the guy's throwing a punch at you. You do your parry. You, know, you leap off to the side to a crane position, and you middle knuckle across the body. Your hand is chambered over here so because I want to do a back knuckle, right? So the strike, the crane principle, is when you say, excuse me, excuse me, I wanted to get my hand over here, and I wanted to hit you along the way. All right? The second move in Leaping Crane is also an excuse me, because your hand is here, you hit him to the kidney, you go, excuse me, I wanted my hand up here so I could get my sandwich. So you're just hitting on the way to a chambered position. And now here's the part that I wanted to really talk about. Okay, so that's the, that's the definition and I'll show you with uh, the help of Ted. Here's the part I really want to talk about. Uh, we're told a story, Mr. Planis tells us, so this is just my recollection of what he said, all right? Uh, on Mr. Parker's desk, there used to be a sheet of paper and it was only about half filled and that's all the rules and principles they used to use way back in the day. Now, if you look at the Encyclopedia of Kempo, there's hundreds now, or there's definitions and everything like that. I like to try to break everything down to the core of what it is. So let's take a look and let's do a little analysis of the crane principle. When we're doing the crane principle, we're actually following a bunch of rules. So the crane principle is don't chamber as a separate motion. So I don't want to chamber my hand or get my hand set as a separate motion. So if I have to bring my hand over, I want to do something with it. I never do it as a separate motion, so I want to hit with it as I go. So the crane principle is never chamber as a separate motion. It's also an insert. So if you're uh, familiar with the equation formula, an insert is one of the things that one of the seven things that we could do to a technique. So my hands here, it's going across them. Hey, I might as well hit him. I might as well insert a middle knuckle across the rib cage while I'm going to my chambered position. So it's an insert. A lot of times, the reason that we're doing the inserts and things like that is because we're trying to follow the idea of whenever you're crossing the center line, you should strike the guy. Okay, so again, hey, here I go, I'm going across, I'm going across the middle, I might as well hit him. And, and this is the important one, it's economy of motion. Economy of motion is do as much as you possibly can in one motion or movement without causing a detraction. So I want to try to get as much done with emphasis as I can in one motion. So as long as I'm moving my hand over, I might as well do that. If you really, really look at all those things, okay, it's all just economy of motion. So if you look at what is an insert, an insert is doing as much as you can without causing a detraction. Striking the center line as you cross it, do as much as you can without causing a detraction. Uh, or if you're just doing the uh, don't chambers separate motion, do as much as you can without causing a detraction. So really, the crane principle just breaks down into economy of motion. So when you really understand the rules and the principles, if you get what economy of motion really is, then you could just say, oh, this rule or principle is just economy of motion. This rule or principle is this. this. And you could take the whole list. I think I have like 33 now on the uh, website. So you could take the whole list of rules and principles and break them down into a lot less if you really distill them down into their basic components. So, but let's see how it works with Ted. 
So let's see how Leaping Crane is going to look like in practical application. So we want to strike as we're crossing the center line, economy of motion, to get to the uh, zone we want to strike from. So as he throws a punch at me, I do my middle knuckle to the rib cage. My hand is chambered now in the zone I want to hit it from. So I did not chamber as a separate motion. As I do my kick and drop him down, now as I turn, that's an, oh, excuse me, I needed my hand back here and chambered. Now I can get him with the sandwich to the head. So, thank you, Ted. So when we're doing this, it's, oh, excuse me, I wanted my hand here. Oh, excuse me, I wanted my hand here. And then you get your sandwich in there. And if you're doing the extension, you want your hand on top so that you could reach around and grab. If you're not doing the extension, you could go under or over. It doesn't make a difference as we go through. When you kick somebody in the back of the leg, they have a, if you do it for real, if you kick high on their leg, they'll fall forward. If you kick right on their knee, they wobble backwards like that. So there should be no shuffle in Leaping Crane. Everybody does it, but there's no shuffle in Leaping Crane if you hit the guy correctly. So if you hit him in the back of the knee, he should lean and fall towards you. And when you hit him in the, the uh, kidney with the back knuckle, he should lean back again. So if anything, you're trying to keep him off of you, not go get him. And that's how the crane principle works. Thank you for watching this video production from Kempo University.